Hey everyone, um, I'm Jonathan Esposito, I'm senior business management major. Um, I'm introducing or interviewing Mr. Paul Poe. Um, he's the associate athletic director at UNC. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce him and he can give a brief intro of himself. Well, thanks for having me, Jonathan. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this is my ninth year at North Carolina as an associate athletic director. I was at the University of Denver for three years before that uh, as an assistant and an associate AD. And uh, before that was in uh, the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals for a couple of years while I was finishing law school and for a little while after that. Got my uh, finance and law degrees from Notre Dame. And uh, while I was doing that, I uh, interned for the Denver Nuggets and Colorado Rockies and Colorado Avalanche. So I've uh, been really fortunate to work in some neat places and work with some good people. Happy to be here. Awesome. Um, very accomplished career, um, as you can see. So one of the um, questions I have is I've been interested in sports administration for a while, um, but what is something that got sports administration kind of on your radar early on in college or even before that and made you want to pursue it? Well, I loved sports and I realized that I play in the NBA. But uh, don't put it in grade and put an end to that. So I uh, realized I should probably look at other ways to stay involved. So, uh, so I realized sport administration was a great track and you can have a really rewarding career, very fulfilling career, and have a lot of fun doing it. So um, that's what put it on my radar. And um, I was told to get a background in business and law. Uh, that would really help set me apart. And I, I'm fortunate I got that great advice from my parents, actually. And uh, so I did that. And while I was in school, I was really focusing on trying to do everything I could to uh, get as many professional experiences as I could in sports so that I'd be more marketable someday. Awesome. Very cool. Um, you talked some about your education and you said that you went to undergrad and law school at Notre Dame. And um, while you were there, how would you say that your education shaped your career choices? And then how would you say that it's helped your, um, I don't know, just your day to day and your, your skills while you're working? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it had a material impact on my uh, career choice or my envisioned career path because uh, I knew what I wanted to do. And I, I think defining the outcome, at least generally, you may not know specifically where you're trying to get to, but if you can generally define the outcome you're trying to produce, then you can reverse engineer it and figure out how to get there. So uh, I, had, I had identified that I wanted to work in, uh, in sports and was trying to figure out the best path to get there. So um, that was uh, fun for me and, and uh, kind of gave me a, a North Star, if you will, of where I was trying to get to with my education. With regards to the second part of your question on how it impacts my day-to-day -day, uh, role here in North Carolina, uh, the finance piece uh, does a little bit from the business management standpoint. I oversee our ticketing and ticket sales here, which uh, are significant revenue streams for our department. And then I also oversee our golf course, which uh, has revenue and expense like any other balance sheet for a standalone business, although this one is rolled up under the athletic department. So uh, the business management functions are really helpful uh, in both of those respects. On the, um, on the legal side, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of legal elements that come into play in college athletics, whether they be uh, dealing with contracts that govern a lot of what we do, um, agents, uh, are, are governed by uh, certain legal provisions. Uh, we've got Title Seven, which has to do with equity and compensation and equity in the workforce. Uh, Title IX obviously gets a lot of uh, publicity. Uh, intellectual property, which is your trademarks and, and the trade dress, if you will, like the look and feel of our scripts and, and uniforms. Uh, and you know, occasionally you'll get a civil claim where somebody will try to bring a lawsuit against you. Occasionally you have somebody that gets picked up for a, a you know, misdemeanor or something. So you got a little criminal law, but it, it really comes up in a lot of places. So uh, it, again, it was great advice. I got to, to get that background and uh, it's, uh, it's enabled me to adapt to the many things that can get thrown at you in this business. Absolutely. I remember when you and I spoke previously, we talked about, um, you getting your JD and how, with that being such a specialized degree, um, it really opened you up to a lot of different routes and um, gave you that 
problem solving, critical thinking ability to really solve a lot of those problems that you'll see in whatever industry you, you went into. Um, so I guess going along with that, um, obviously COVID-19, it's hard to not bring up that in conversation, especially with within the business aspect. So how would you say that, that the, the COVID-19 pandemic has um, kind of shaped and influenced and challenged um, the UF, UNC athletic department as a whole and then you and your role specifically? Well, as a whole, it's, it's had a few different types of impacts. The first one is obviously financial, and we've seen a lot of coverage of that nationally where uh, schools are losing a lot of money. Uh, we had our first home football game, and we only had 30 people in attendance. And so we lose all the ticket revenue. You lose the ancillary revenue streams that are related to that, whether they be concessions or um, some of the sponsorship uh, money that might be associated with that. There's, there's significant financial ramifications from the pandemic we're in right now. So that's the, the first way it's impacted us. The uh, second way is just a more of a cultural thing uh, or a daily process thing uh, that you know, we've had to adjust to the testing protocols and new safety measures that we need to make sure are in place so that we're doing the right thing by our student athletes, by our coaches, staff, and supporters, anybody else that might be around. We want to we want to be uh, responsible members of the community. So uh, it's impacted us heavily in that way. And obviously, there the more you test, there are financial ramifications again. So they're they're interrelated but different. Uh, you know, I, I think it's also uh, made us keenly aware of of what makes college athletics so special. It's a sense of community. It's a sense of uh, camaraderie at the uh, at the games that we get to host and the fun things that we get to do and when that's all taken away from you 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 uh, come to appreciate it even more pretty quickly uh, so that's that's how it's impacted us collectively uh, me personally I'm fortunate I've got great colleagues here in North Carolina and there are a couple of them that are running point on all the testing and safety protocols uh, yeah I work with them a little bit on that but um, in my role specifically it, it's impacted the units that I supervise and so the golf course uh, you know, we've, we've got the standard USGA protocols in place now to make sure that anybody who comes and plays at the course is safe. Uh, you know, with, with ticketing, it's dramatically impacted what we're doing in the ticket office and the ticket sales unit because we uh, can't sell tickets. So we're, we're having to think of other new ways to generate revenue. So we sold some of those cardboard cutout fans that you might have seen, and it's, it's certainly not going to make up all the lost revenue but it it helps a little bit and every little bit counts so it's been a material impact collectively and individually on everybody like it has across society absolutely um yeah we've also spoken about yeah just the the revenue streams and looking for alternate revenues within different sports and um in some ways that might actually help in the future just being able to pivot when things go wrong and being able to look for um different solutions so very cool. Um, yeah. Another question that I had was, um, aside from, aside from the the COVID nineteen pandemic, what is a a relatively common um, headache or obstacle that you have to deal with, just kind of on the day to day? I think it really depends on the the uh, sector of the department that you're talking about. So, uh, you know, in, in my role as overseeing all of our enterprise risk management efforts, there's a lot that, that you got to worry about. Um, there's a lot of things that can go off the rails on you. And some of them, if they, if they get sideways, they can cause you a big problem. So, uh, you know, I, it, I guess it's a, it's a challenge to sum it all up, uh, you know, in one concise answer, but some of the ones that we, we see the most common are um, obviously you want to make sure that, that people are following the rules uh, and, uh, I've got some great colleagues in, in compliance that that uh, do the rules education and oversee those efforts. Um, but that's and that is a focus for everybody in the department. Um, you know, we have a number of legal issues that that could arise um, with student athletes. We've got over 800 uh, student athletes, all of whom are 18 to 22 year olds. Uh, they're great people. They're really smart. Um, but the college environment, sometimes you, you inevitably get uh, some instances of misconduct or, or different things that you have to deal with and uh, different things that are, that are threats to their health and well-being. And so we want to make sure we jump on those and, and are really proactive in those. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that, um, you know, if you get a really acute problem, 
um, in one of those areas. If a student athlete really needs help, if they're in a bad situation, uh, you know, for a health reason or, or uh, something like that, uh, you know, we've had, we've had a couple of crazy fans threaten student athletes. Uh, you know, those are, those are particularly worrisome. And, and like anything else, you just want to make sure you jump on it and be really proactive and uh, deliberate in your response. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so next and final question. Um, so what advice would you say that you have for students in high school or in college who are interested in pursuing sports administration, but aren't sure how to maybe get that first connection or just get their foot in the door? Well, I, you know, I think a lot of what you're doing and building connections with people in the business, getting the first job is always the hardest one to get. Uh, so don't get discouraged. It took me a long time to get my, my first chance in this business. Uh, knocked on a lot of doors, got told no a ton. Uh, but if you do all the cliche things you've heard before, obviously you work hard, you treat people with respect, be kind to other people, uh, be honest, do the right thing. Sometimes it's, that sounds pretty, but uh, you know, we know a lot, a lot of people don't always do that. So uh, all those different pieces, I think the things that helped me the most though were, were really building genuine relationships with people in the industry, looking for things that needed to be done. Even if they weren't in my job description, every organization has needs that go beyond the job descriptions on paper. So looking for what, uh, what needs to be done and doing it. Absolutely. It's a great answer. You mentioned the cliche things. I think they're very cliche. They, they seem, uh, it's pretty true that there's a lot of people who aren't, aren't willing to do this thing. So I um, appreciate the answer and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Um, again, I'm Jonathan Esposito. Um, and, uh, thank Mr. Paul for, uh, for joining us. Great to be with you. Thanks a ton, Jonathan.